Hey, Fun Chief here. Welcome to Alliance Match Training Series, where fortune favors the prepared mind. Up next is Lesson 20, Tactics for Artillery Units. And in this match, we've set up a, a really a faux battle. It's just a bunch of uh, folks, total of 14 of us, inside the Mediterranean map. And we go through... Uh, the research and so on, build a bunch of units, and I'm going to show you just a few things uh, to consider when you're doing artillery. Uh, the, the companion version of this is lesson number 19, and that's for uh, uh, tactics for naval units. Uh, you'll get to see both of these things, and hopefully they help you understand some of the nuances between the tactics necessary for both artillery and naval units. So with that, Let's get into it. So in this map, this is a, let's call it a faux alliance match. It's purely just set up to do a little bit of training and so on. So I've got a, a full Mediterranean map of seven versus seven, but it's broken up into a three person alliance uh, teams. So it's not truly a proper alliance match, but otherwise you're starting resources and um, the exact map layout and so on is all all identical. Um, I've had some help from a bunch of folks, and and uh, one of them is Striker right here. So Striker is <clears throat> Egypt, and Striker. Let's take a look at what he's built. He's doing a share intelligence with me right now, and and uh, we all should be very grateful to Striker and guys like him, because you're all going to get to see a little bit of uh, a mock battle, shall we call it, to show some. Uh, techniques and procedures that you can use to um, effectively fight the enemy. So Striker has, has built a lot of really powerful stuff in here. Look at this. Four theater defense systems. Now this game started on on day 10, which is typical of the alliance match. You get t uh, advanced progression, advanced resources, and so on. So we've been doing this now for 17 days. So he really researched the hell out of this and bought some things that that were kind of unusual. Uh, armored fighting vehicles, level six. I mean, those those are pretty powerful. There's another four more um, theater defense weapons. Wow, look at this. Um, his infantry is almost max. His MRLs are almost, or at least level four. That's good. That gives him the 100 kilometer range, so you need that. Um, so right away, uh, what I see here is a problem. <clears throat> he only has is one level one um, mobile radar. And this is something that everybody should learn this lesson, you know, and he probably was counting on having somebody else help him. So I don't want to make it sound like, you know, he's not doing what he's supposed to do. I'm just pointing out that this is a weakness in, in his design for his build plan. Um, really, he should have built some mo mobile radars in order to make sure that his MRLs could shoot. Because what happens is, when you lose your radar sight, you don't see anything unless it gets into visual range, and that's just not adequate. So what will wind up happening is is anything that doesn't have radar support just gets picked apart. Um, and that's true for both the land battle and especially true for the sea battle. So if you go up here, what I asked him to do was to send two stacks um, up into my... When I, uh, I want him to place them here and here, but that's okay. He put, put them all right here. This is a very powerful stack. I mean, look at this. A level 5 tank commander, a level 4 infantry officer, a level 6, uh, two level 6 um, uh, uh, armored fighting vehicles, uh, four level 4 Mavs. I mean, that, those are deadly. Um, two infantry and 11, 11 level 4 MRLs. So this is one hell of a power stack. Now... Right away, you're going to think, oh my god, this is terrible. Well, you know, he has a problem with this stack. If he doesn't split it up, um, it's going to wind up with a really big reduction in sufficiency right here, 42%. So that's a huge reduction. Now, an advantage to this is that you don't lose any hit points. You retain the full value of the hit points. So that's an advantage to some extent. But what you wind up losing is the attack and defense. That, that really gets hurt. Um, and also speed. So if you tried to move this as a single stack, it would be incredibly ponderous and probably just get picked apart. So, anyhow, this is the setup. 
Um, what I've built is uh, something a little bit more traditional, right? So here's MAs, and I, I stopped at, uh, at level four, and Mavs, I stopped at level four, and this is pretty typical of what you might expect to find. What you see here, you're, you're not going to see anything like this. Um, you know, you might, you're going to see level four MRLs, but you're not, all this other stuff that's researched this high level is, is not going to happen. Um, I didn't put any research, of course, into my, my infantry. I do have MRLs also, uh, both with tank commander and infantry officer. Um, when I start the battle, this will be at level four, so it'll be a hundred kilometer range. Also, um, these I will not research any further. I'll just keep them where they are. Um, although not researching um, this one really hurts it's a, the ability quite a bit. So uh, I had to make a whole lot of other units. I had to make some air units as well. I got some, I got some, uh, here I'll show you what else I got over here. Um, I got, uh, this will be level four, uh, level three uh, cruiser here very soon. And once I get the level three cruiser, I can finish off the, the level four uh, infantry officer. And then I'm going to fight a mock battle over here against Morocco. Morocco has some really awesome stuff. Um, I also built an AWACS, and here's some ASFs I built, and where's my AWACS at? It's over here somewhere. Um, probably looking right at it, but I don't see it. Oh well, there's an AWACS over here somewhere. Oh, here it is, right there. Um, so I built AWACS, normally this would be level four at war start. It probably won't be that high by the time I start the fight. And we're going to do this battle, the, the, the naval battle out here. Uh, and we'll do the land battle right here. And then I've got my friend Jeremy, who later I'll bring him on. And what he's going to do is uh, we're going to talk through an attack that he's planned into to Spain. Um, the other thing I want to show you here is that I also have special forces. So we're not at war, right? And I've got special forces up here. I'm able to see what he has in here, which is like nothing. <laughs> So it doesn't look like Spain's actually tried to build much of anything. Um, it looks like he put a little bit of time in the infrastructure and basically hasn't come on again, and that's fine. I mean, th this is all just a map that's intended to be just to conduct some training and have a little fun, but nothing nothing serious. None of this stuff counts against you or for you even. So um, over here, I have uh, a couple also of these special forces. Now what's funny is that early, I was flying into... Turkey, I landed and saw some of the stuff that he's got. He's got a, a hell of a force. Um, same thing with uh, with Greece. I literally flew into their countries and landed. Didn't trigger war. Saw what they had. <laughs> and it was kind of cool. Now, a lot of people misunderstand the power of the special forces. It's not really intended to be a combat unit. It's more of a reconnaissance unit. That's the real strength of the SF unit. So what's going to happen now, once I trigger war with this, right, what will happen immediately is he's going to be blind because he doesn't have, it, well, he does have the radar that's with the infantry. The infantry unit does have a little bit of radar. So he's going to be able to see out as far as, uh, <laughs> out as far as this. But I don't think he can see, let's just take a look at this unit. I don't think he can see ground, um, anything but uh, armored uh, units heavy units so let's see what it says here this is the yeah signature ground unit signature high so he's not going to be able to see infantry with that um, but he will be able to see this so his 11 MRLs will be able to see these uh, Mavs and MAs sitting right here and will probably shoot the shit out of them oh look he's moving why is he doing that Oh, he split his he split his force. Okay, I see what he's doing. He's moving the MRLs to be closer to me. That's interesting. That's not what I asked him to do. <laughs> I wanted him to go just here and here and just have a simple exchange, but he's not doing that. That's all right. Um, anyhow, so uh, what I was going to do here is just show you how to. Uh, see, he's moving into this territory right here. That's a really bad place to move into if he's going to fight there. Um, he does get an advantage with the artillery. He'll be able to... Um, he'll be able to get a... If you look and see his MRLs get an advantage. 
25% CF for attack mod. The problem is, look how slow they move, right? 0.43. So that's going to be incredibly slow. And also, he made a mistake. He split his... He split his infantry officer away. So look, he's going to try to make a big ass power stack right there. So let's see what he what he does. Um, what I'll wind up doing is probably pull it back a little bit. What you want to have is a perpendicular line to the enemy. So he, if he's going to move in here, this is a really good line because I can I can move in, attack, and move out directly away from him. So <clears throat> you see, if I was if I was in a, in a line like this, let's say I was moving along this line. Um, and I moved along this line to get closer, I, I still am basically not increasing my range as I moved away. And that's that's what you want to avoid. You want to you want to move in close to the enemy, strike when you get within range, and then immediately turn around and run back away from the enemy. And what will happen often is that you can you can shoot and get out of range immediately and the enemy doesn't have the opportunity to shoot back at you. That's ultimately what you want. So <clears throat> if this works out the way I hope it does, and I think it will, um, we're going to uh, we're going to have a little interesting fight here. Just he's already reacting to this stuff, so that's going to be great. Uh, all right, and then the other thing I want to show is how to use these helicopters. So what will happen is when I trigger, he'll take he'll take this territory right here, and he'll be inside there. I'll be able to see what he has with this SF unit. Um, he won't he won't be able to see this SF unit at all. Uh, I will then move this out of range so he can't fire at me and then and then fire at him as I move into range. I'll move probably along probably what I'll do is move along this path. If you look here, this is open ground. So this is a really good line to be on right here because it moves directly towards the enemy and moves away. It's open ground. so I get the the best movement speed um, that I can get. So here is, uh, where's open ground at? Um, gosh, oh, here it is, right here, the very first one. 1 1.3, so it's like the best speed next to desert, right? It's the same one, I guess. Um, 1.3, so 1.3, and then I stack with that. Uh, everything else, look at that, 4.23. That's because I get this tank commander advantage and this infantry officer advantage. That's amazing. Right, his his move right now is 0.78, so that's like five times almost his uh, ability. Oh, actually, it is five times his ability um, to move, and that means that I'm going to be able to move in and hit him and move out, and there's nothing he's going to be able to do about it. I will probably be able to hit him and give him damage, but receive no damage myself. So that's what I hope to be able to demonstrate to you um, how this all works now. You know, the, the units that I built here, this is not typical, right? Normally you would have, like, some focus on MA or AIR or, or um, uh, MRLs or Navy, you know, something like that. <clears throat> and I had to build a lot of stuff because I wanted to show everybody different things. So I built, I built some Navy, I built some AIR, I built some MAs, I built some MRLs, I built a little bit of anti-AIR with, with MAVs and uh, SAMs. Um, I had to build Megas, of course, which are pretty common to see built for... Um, a particular, um, uh, if you're an arty, you're going to build some some megas, some um, mobile ground radars. Um, but we'll put all this together here in a little bit. I'll give it some more time so he can get into position, and then uh, we'll we'll do this fight. Uh, it'll be interesting. Anyhow, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so here's the setup for the Portugal versus Spain map. And what we've got here is Portugal, of course, he's built whole bunch of crap and researched it a little bit uh, it doesn't look like Spain has done too much but that's okay for the purposes of this part of the discussion we're really going to talk about choices and terrain and making up a course of action for attacking somebody based on what you see in the terrain and just do a little bit of analysis on that so uh, I'm joined uh, by uh, Jeremy Desco Jeremy is an Alliance team member and he has proven to be an enormously capable artillery Commander, I have learned to really appreciate his skills. Um, so, Jeremy, kind of walk me through uh, real quick what choices you made on units and and uh, uh, how you're going to prosecute this attack. All right. So right now, <clears throat> I have uh, my main units are 
are going to be my, my MRLs with my tank commander and my infantry officer. That'll be my main stack. Um, but uh, while I was building up to that, um, I made some uh, mobile artillery. Uh, you can pump those out before you can get to MRLs. And so those will be sort of my supporting artillery units. So that way, once um, once I hit with my MRLs, they don't have, they'll probably fire back. And so they won't have a shot for another hour and I can move my MAs in closer and fire another shot on them and get a free shot essentially and uh, and then be able to pull them back as well and still be out of range before they're able to get another shot off if I move them correctly. Uh, so I have my MRLs, I have um, MAs, and then I have some MAVs to protect me from anything flying in, whether it be um, missiles or um, attack choppers or anything like that, or any you know fixed-wing fighters and things like that, just to kind of give me some air cover uh, while I'm traveling into the uh, into the enemy field of, of combat. So um, <clears throat> what I would essentially do is, is take my uh, infantry and move them in first because I want to keep my artillery and anything that's my major units or support units, I want to keep them out of view so that they don't see exactly what I have. And so until my, art, I mean, until my infantry were to capture the province that they're moving into, I would not move my supporting units up any further um, so as to keep them invisible. Hey, and so that will go ahead and initiate your attacks and, and go ahead and do it in the order you're doing it and just walk through what you're doing and why as you do it, okay? All right. So right now I'm splitting off my infantry um, from a stack of, of Mavs that they're paired with right now. And so I'll have them starting to move in, which I've got them going to the first province. I don't want to go too far ahead um, because in case something happens on another side of the map that I need to be paying attention to, and I get uh, sidetracked, they'll keep moving and could possibly move into enemy fire without me noticing it. But since I have my, my mega or my mobile ground radar uh, projecting out much farther than that province, I, I see that there's nothing there. And it's a level three radar, so I can see infantry and armored units. Um, so I know that there's nothing there waiting on me to come into that province. So there's not a, an immediate threat, but I also just want to keep that in mind as I'm moving forward to not move too far ahead to get out of the range of my ground radar. So that's what I'm doing first. I'm moving some infantry in to capture that first territory. And as soon as I capture that first territory, then I'll start to move my, my support units up to gain more sight with my mega and also to be able to project out farther to hit the enemy at the farthest range that I have possible. Now, right right now, my MRLs are only level three, so I don't have the range that I would at level four, um, but you know that can also be something that's being currently researched and will you know, hit level four at a specific time to give me that range where I can hit at my farthest range possible. So the objective generally is to get MRLs to level four because the most important thing for uh, your really in this game in uh, alliance matches is range. So this is a hundred kilometer range. That's the longest range ground unit there is. So uh, these are a little under researched, but but for purposes of this training, it's probably fine. Um, all right. So Jeremy, walk me through the thinking behind the path that you're taking now. I mean, why not go some other path? You know. Like, for example, why not go into the mountains here? Because you do get a bonus. Your artillery gets a bonus for uh, being in mountains, a 25% bonus. So why wouldn't you choose to do that? Well, the the premise behind choosing the path in between those two rivers right there is because that's open ground, which allows me to move uh, not only in a straight line back and forth, but also... Uh, much faster than I would in the mountains. I do get the um, the attack bonus in the mountains. However, um, when I move in the mountains, I move much slower, uh, which allows something to catch up to me faster or, or, or hit me multiple times as opposed to maybe just once if I was in open ground. And so I prefer to stay in open ground or, you know, desert or something like that, as opposed to mountains and forested areas, just because of the speed 
to allow me to get in, hit them, and then get back out as quickly as possible. And that's really the main objective is to be able to hit them, get back as fast as possible without getting, without allowing them the opportunity to hit you back. Okay. And so that's why I chose that route is because, um, as we were discussing, that route allows me to move straight in as I'm passing um, Seville, I can hit that if I wanted to. If there was nothing else more important that I needed to hit, I could hit that on the way by. And then as I keep going along that route, um, I could hit uh, Madrid. I could get all the way to Valencia and um, possibly even reach out into that forested area if my range didn't allow, reach out into that forested area and hit Saragossa to eliminate um, troop production. So if there's no troops there for me to hit, then I hit their production and it allows me to continue moving without the possibility of them continuing production and to come in back behind me. All right, so you move along through this clear area here and the objective primarily is to hit these production centers, Saragossa, Valencia, uh, of course the capital here, um, as well as Seville and ultimately Malaga as well. So Correct. if you, the, this is the mistake that a lot of folks um, fail to recognize the difference between Alliance versus Alliance and a uh, public match is really the objective that you're after in Alliance versus Alliance is two things. You wanna go after the ability to build units and you want to go after units. Those are the two things you want. It's not really so much about controlling territory and controlling uh, population centers of cities and stuff. So this particular track that he's going on is going to allow him to uh, wipe out an awful lot of production in Spain. So you, not only is this a, what's known in the military as a high-speed avenue of approach, but you're going to be within range of all of these production centers, and that is ultimately what his objective is. And of course, along the way, you're going to be killing any units that you see. So yeah, and that's all using just one line. That's that's using one avenue to get in. That's not having to go and then turn and come back towards Seville or anything like that. As long as you have your units um, researched up properly, which would be to at least level four. Um, you should be able to hit most of these without making any major redirects on your units. You should be able to just go in a straight line and pop those as you go by. So looking at this right now, he, you're still, have you started moving your units yet? I can't tell. It looks like. I started moving my infantry. Okay. I, infantry moving out from um, Elvis. Yeah, I see it. So what, what, how, what he's doing here is he's moving out this infantry unit that's right here. He's moving it out to this location here. He'll capture this province. This province then, you know, once it's captured, the enemy can't see into it. And so now what he'll do is he'll continue to move his infantry forward and moving it basically to capture the next province, okay? But while, while that's moving, he's going to then bring up his artillery so that his artillery range gets extended, you know, from, where is it right now? It's uh, his, art his uh, artillery range. Okay, so it's right here it's, is uh, where it's at. So when he gets to this point, you know, it'll be quite a bit further out. And so this way, it kind of keeps his infantry underneath and close to his uh, two envelopes. The one envelope is the artillery envelope, and the other envelope is the anti-air envelope right here. This is anti-air envelope. So it's kind of like a orchestration between the three things, and you want to keep them reasonably close together so they protect and support one another. You move infantry up, you capture a territory, you keep Mavs fairly close, mobile anti-air and SAMs if you got them, and the idea is that you capture that, that province, uh, then you move your artillery further up to provide cover so that you could then leapfrog to the next province and so on and so forth. And uh, in doing that, you know, you protect your units. Now, something else is really interesting here that, that uh, um, is really worthwhile. This is kind of you know, interesting. This is one of my units here. It's a special forces unit. And I wanted to show you guys this because it's a very powerful unit. Not because it's like, it's got this enormous, you know, push, push a win button 
combat capability, although they are pretty formidable, um, especially in groups. The purpose really for special forces is more to do with, uh, with scouting ahead and doing reconnaissance. Uh, one of the te techniques that you'll see the, your enemy using is they might have something like, they'll have a dot in the middle here, let's say, and you pick that up on radar, then you pick up another one on radar over here, and you might pick up another one on radar over here. Well, which one is arty? Which one is Mavs? Which one is infantry? You don't know that. And so what you're doing when you shoot at one of them, you're kind of taking a chance. Like, I don't know what that is. And, and with um, special forces, you're going to be able to see the exact makeup, and he won't even know that you're there. Now, the counter for that is, uh, is reconnaissance vehicles, CRVs, combat reconnaissance vehicle. You have a, a CRV in here, you'll be able to see this enemy unit and you'll be able to do something about it. But CRV is not built that often. Uh, and usually when they are, it's very small numbers. So it's uh, you take a little bit of a chance if you use these units. Um, they are very powerful, but they can be countered. And just, just keep that in mind. Uh, so Jeremy, anything else you want to add here to um, uh, your combat strategy? Uh, what we'll do is uh, I'll give you a second to talk a little bit more. And then we'll pause and come back in, uh, I don't know, a couple hours, I guess. Once you get set up to the next, um, the next province, and you're getting ready to fire on uh, your first province, okay? My the the only thing that I would want to add is um, I do have Mavs mobile anti-air vehicles there, um, and I don't have a large number of stacks of those. But my main objective with those is to protect my artillery. Um, that's not necessarily to protect my infantry. It's great when it does, uh, but my main objective is to protect my artillery because my MRLs um, will not have any defense against um, against anything in the air. And What's so, the main threat that you're worried about? Do what? What is the main threat that you're worried about from air? Uh, the main threat that I would be worried about. Um, would be like attack choppers um, or uh, because guns gunships would pose a threat but not as much of a threat as attack choppers against my my heavy artillery um, but that will be my main threat that and um, and any ASFs or, or uh, elite fighter elite attack aircrafts that come in uh, to be able to hit those and you know even if I didn't take them out it would at least make them think twice before sending them back in knowing that I have anti-air there protecting my artillery okay so we're going to take a pause here for a little bit we'll come back and check on this progress because this this is slow of course this is a 1x so it's going to take him I mean just to get to that province and a little bit beyond it you know two hours and 25 minutes so we'll check in a little bit when he gets set up over here and just before he gets ready to shoot into um, into this capital and wipe out these units here, uh, we'll come back. So with that, I will be back in just a little bit. All right, we're back now. We're getting ready to start this battle in, in Bulgaria. So this is not exactly the situation that I wanted to have because, you know, I'm a little under-researched right now. But you guys will get the gist of the really important things here. Um, the scenario is right now where... Uh, shared intelligence between Egypt and myself. Uh, we set this up. He moved the three stacks in here. He's got this power stack right here of MRLs with a tank commander level five, which is pretty awesome. He's got uh, level four Mavs there, a stack of four that's, that's stacked very closely to, to him. And also very close to that is infantry officer with two armored fighting vehicles, two motorized infantry level six and uh, four. Uh, MR, or two MRLs also in there. So these are all stacked pretty closely get together inside this uh, this one province right here, uh, Atos province, Bulgaria. Um, it's a mountain province. So the downside of that is everything's going to move really slowly. He doesn't get any kind of bonuses for any kind of defense. He does get a bonus for attack. But as I pointed out in an earlier segment here, one of the things he doesn't have is a Megar. He has no Megar supporting him. Now, I have a SF unit right here, so once I declare war, I will still be able to see these guys very clearly. Um, so I've got a helicopter's attack coming in here. They're about 15 minutes out. What I want to do is strike him first with my MAs that are right here and hit this stack of 
Mavs and try to damage them or maybe even wipe them out. I don't think I can wipe them out, but I'll probably damage them um, pretty significantly. And that way, they, um, they're not going to hurt my helos when they come in and do an attack. The helos are going to do something that's kind of cool. What happens from the enemy side, once they are sitting inside this province, I can fly up to the edge of this province and they won't see me. They're, they don't have... They don't have an AWACS or radar that's capable of seeing these helicopters. And so when the helicopters reach their patrol range, which right now you can see the patrol range is, is uh, it's, it stops here, but the range extends well inside this soon-to-be enemy province. And as soon as it gets to that range right there, it'll automatically initiate attack on everything within this big circle, this patrol range. And so what happens is these guys never see it. They don't see it coming in. They don't. They just get a notification that there was an attack, so it's a very effective thing. That's what makes helicopters incredibly powerful. Um, most of the time, you're going after uh, our, uh, armored units, which of course MAs and MRLs are, and that's your main thing that you're trying to attack and kill. So, in general, you want to have as much of these attack wings as possible. Now, they'll probably get smacked pretty hard with whatever survives. Uh, for this mobile anti-air but a lot of times what happens is because you don't have any any support with radar that can see these helicopters coming in these uh, mobile mobile anti-air they don't even go off so there's a pretty good chance it won't go off we'll know if it does or not because i got the special forces here it'll be able to see that so without further ado um well hey, i want to just talk about some of these things here this is an mrl unit attack it's going to be uh within range right away i've got another ma that's within range right now, so we're going to be able to open up on him with a lot of stuff, and let's just see what happens here. I'll, st I'll kick off the attack here. Um, Jeremy, is there anything you want to add to this, or any other thoughts? Uh, no, you covered it pretty, pretty well. Okay, so just point out a couple of things. Uh, the one thing that I really recommend when you're thinking about planning your attacks and stuff like that is, you know, this is your normal mode right here. Go over here and switch on terrain types. And what's important here is that we don't want anything that's going to impair our ability to quickly move in and hit something and move out. We want to strike at something, turn around and go the opposite direction so that we get out of their range very fast before they have a chance to respond. And if you do it fast enough uh, and you get better and better at this as you practice it, you're going to wind up um, uh, really laying out some smack on an enemy, hitting them first uh, often and... Uh, Get, making it so that you wear them down before they even have a chance to fire back at you. In some cases, they won't ever get a chance to fire back at you. And that's ultimately what you want. Now, he's going to be really impaired by not having a radar in here. So let's just go and see, go ahead and see how this is going to, going to unfold. So let's open up first with an attack from this eight stack of MAs with two MRLs in it. I'm going to hit this unit right here. I might get some splash damage too, so let's see what happens here. He's moving in to attack. Say he's got less than a, he's got a minute and nine seconds. Okay, so when he moves in to attack, as soon as I see him hitting, you'll see the little the little animation of a, of a hit, and shortly after that, you'll see uh, a notification uh, saying that it happened. Uh, you shouldn't wait for the notification. What you want to do is really be paying attention. It's 52 seconds away. Really pay attention to this. 48 seconds. So when this does kick off, I'm immediately going to rush back towards the center of this is what I want to do. So uh, uh, 38 seconds here. As soon as I see that attack go off, I'm going to immediately send it the other way. Now, one of the things I want you to point out, I want to point out here is this return fire. I have it on return fire only. That's going to allow me to immediately change it from this command that I've given it to go attack this guy. It's 18 seconds now. I'm going to be able to immediately give it a new command, and it's not going to get locked in, continue to fire. If you put this in, in this mode right here, the aggressive mode, it's just going to stay there and continue to fire. And even when you tell it to move, it won't stop firing. It'll lock itself down in there. So you don't want to use that aggressive in this particular case. There we go. See? Okay, so he did fire back at me. He did fire back at me. So that is, I'm rushing now. All right, so now, now we're at war. <clears throat> He was able to fire at me. Okay, so I lost two. I lost two MAs. I got I almost lost a, a, a mobile anti-air. And what did he lose? He lost. He lost one Mav, 
And did he take any splash damage from anything? No, he didn't take any splash damage. So he's in really good shape right now. All right, so I can see all of this stuff only because I have this SF unit that's right there. So these guys are coming in for an attack now. So let's try to... We, we know that he's already used his attack. So let's see what these MAs do to him now. So one seconds. thing we want to also point out, Chief, is to make sure that they understand that, that your line of movement is always uh, a movement straight straight to or straight away instead of having to go diagonals uh, so that you don't get caught uh, when you're making your turn. They can't catch up to you. Yeah, okay, so my MA's just struck. Now notice I'm moving back directly away from him. He's already fired one shot. So here I'm going to try to get another one here. Let's try this. He's got 20 seconds he's going to be there. Let's see what happens here. He's already down to seven. Have I fired yet? 11 seconds. Nine. Five. Okay, he's going to fire any second now. There, he just fired. Okay, so right away what I want to do is pull back just a little bit um, so I'm not getting hit. Okay. And also having it, having it on return fire, just so you guys understand, having it on return fire does not mean that your unit will stop and wait to be shot before it fires. It will go ahead and continue with its fire order, but it does not, uh, it, like Chief said, it does not get locked in on aggressive fire and, and not allow you to move back if you give it a separate order. It'll stay on return fire, but it'll allow you to move out of the fire range without having to change that setting, which wastes time. Okay, so from his point of view now, <clears throat> they actually didn't capture this territory because they're not in the center of the territory with the infantry. That's interesting. Um, from his point of view now, what he's able to do, i got to move out, out of this range, so I should be out of the range when I get there. He did hit me one time. He won't be able to hit me again. Um, what's going to happen now is that this helicopter is coming in, and in six minutes... It's going to initiate an attack. Now, what I want to do, if I'm smart about this, I want to try to understand where this unit is exactly. Because if, if I can, the smart thing to do is to make this so it only goes, it only attacks the, uh, I'll try to do that. That's uh, six minutes away. Um, what I want to do is only attack the main stack right here. And I want to make it so that the patrol, see this patrol range right here, that patrol range extends to where it just barely goes inside here. Hopefully it just attacks this one stack and I might be able to get away with not getting hit at all with these Mavs. Now this, he's in a really terrible position here because he doesn't have Meggers to see radar. None of this he can see. None of my units he's able to see right now. Um, this these helicopters that are coming in, he doesn't know that they're there. He doesn't have AWACS, so it's the only thing that will be able to see these. He doesn't have the AWACS. So when these things come in and hit him, it's uh it's not gonna it's not going to um he's not gonna be able to see it. So we'll wait just a second uh, a few minutes here, so seven more minutes before this attack happens. Um so a couple, just a couple comments about what he's built here. So it's very uncommon to see someone build armored fighting vehicles. Uh, I mean, these are great. I use them a lot in public games, but I've never built one inside an alliance match. So you're not likely to see these. And certainly these really high level of research on these things is very unlikely. And although people do research the mobile infantry, or excuse me, motorized infantry, they don't, uh, they don't usually research it beyond level one. The only reason to research it is so that you have the infantry officer available to you. So that's also going to be very unusual. And then you're never going to be able to uh, research to level five, this infantry officer, in order to get beyond, or to get to level four, you have to have um, infantry researched up quite a bit. So it's not likely that you'll ever see these kinds of levels of research for these, these things. Now the MRLs, of course, at level four, that is very common. Same thing with this uh, tank commander, level five. So this guy's hitting really hard. I mean, with, with his, with his uh, research level, he's he's hitting at a forty-five percent bonus to attack. That's incredible. <laughs> that is unbelievable. That's a huge hit. 
So that guy was able to just smack the hell out of this guy down here. And I lost two MAs because of it. So he had a bonus here of plus 25% because he's in the mountains. And he had a 45% bonus because he he, uh, he had this uh, uh, highly researched officer. Now, the other thing I want to point out, too, is that he made another mistake here by splitting up two things here. He put the the tank commander and the infantry officer in two different stacks. And I would advise against that. Keep them in the same stack because these two bonuses for movement, the 20% bonuses for speed movement, stack. And that's a huge advantage. So I understand why he did it um, for purposes of this battle. But when you're fighting the, uh, with these things in an, in an actual alliance match, you really want to have your tank commander and your infantry officer stack together and don't separate them. Use it for the extra hit points that you get as well as the the real reason is for the uh, additional speed bonus. Um, so this uh, helicopter is getting ready to attack here in five minutes. So we still got a little ways to go yet. Um, let me put it on a pause and I'll come back here in just a couple minutes. All right, so we're back now. We've got a minute and 37 seconds before my attack helicopters are going to uh, reach their patrol range or patrol spot. Then they'll execute an attack on anything within inside the circle. So if I did this right, I might be able to do it without getting hit by his Mav. So we'll see here in a second. Um, right after that attack, there'll be a uh, five minutes to go, I guess, now for uh, for my gunships. And if I, or no, yeah, my gunships, I might just try to change this gunship. Well, we'll just go with this for now, just so you can see what happens. Um, and now, again, because he didn't place something in the center of this province when I went to war, he didn't capture it, uh, infantry. Uh, and But I would be able to see him anyway because I have this SF unit here. So we just got a 50 seconds now before this attack kicks off. And let's just take a quick look and see what happens here. 214 out of 214. 87.4 out of 93 and 160 out of 176 so he's already lost four mrls that's that's a that's a pretty big hit that he took right there so that that's actually enough to where i could change the tide of this entire fight um, by giving him that kind of a loss so the fact that all of my mrls are intact he wasn't able to hit me i did lose a couple ma's over here big deal haven't lost any ma's up here okay but I preserve my MRLs, and that's the thing I want to do. Um, he would have an advantage in because he's got... Uh, uh, okay, here we go. Attack, get ready to go off in two seconds. Let's see what happens here. Probably going to get the crap shellacked out of me by these guys. Okay, so this did not look like it fired off. So if that's true, I took a little bit of damage so they did not fire off. Look, he lost two more MRLs. And I did it just right where I was able to, this is exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to attack just his his uh, MRL stack. I didn't want to, I wanted to avoid getting hit by his anti-air. And I didn't really want to hit any infantry because all that would have done is just give me more losses on here. And not that big of a, an advantage, right? So what I'm going to do with this infantry now is I'm going to do kind of something similar. I want to avoid his, I want to avoid his, uh, his main stack here and just hit this infantry so I'm gonna go all the way over here notice that this patrol range goes just over where his stack is at in fact if I wanted to be really really sensitive about it I'll just make it come up a little bit so yeah we're good there so that's gonna take a few more minutes 10 more minutes to get there I'll put it on pause here in just a second and not waste your guys time sitting here watching this thing take 10 minutes to fly to this location um, Jeremy, anything to add to any of this? Uh, no, sir, not that I can think of at the moment. Okay. Um, so this was a pretty successful attack, and this is what I want. This is the big thing I want you guys to recognize about uh, the huge advantage that helicopters have. Because they fly what they call uh, nape of the earth, um, you're able to dodge any radars that this has. So even this really uh, limited radar that he has with him that's organic to the infantry officer that he has that radar cannot see helicopters and if even if he had a level three mega it was up here mobile ground radar it would not be able to see helicopters so the way it works is these helicopters fly in they have no idea a helicopter is coming in and because they don't have radar coverage 
there's a really good chance that you're not even going to be able to trigger off the anti-air Mavs. Unless, of course, it was stacked with this MRL and uh, Tank Commander stack. If they were stacked in here, they would. They definitely would, would have triggered because it would have had the defense, um, defense trigger at the very least would have got them. So something to keep in mind, you know, this, this is a very powerful attacks. And what we started doing was starting to think about having AWACS and producing extra AWACS so that we had AWACS supporting the ground attack. Because that way you can see these as they're coming in. And because they move kind of slow, you know, you have a chance to reposition something. Um, you can fly in ASFs to shoot that at them or put it, put it so that uh, if you see that they're coming, you can kind of estimate where they might be coming at, and you can have it so that your range um, of your ASFs will overlap where they're coming to. I mean, it's, in effect, you know, it gives you the ability to counter what's about to happen. But he was not able... He had a pretty powerful stack. I mean, there's three, three um, level six Mavs there. I mean, that would that was going to lay down a lot of hurt. So for helicopters, it's eight. So that'd be 24 damage on the helicopters. And I would have lost, you know, what do I got for helicopters? Uh, for hit points, it's 20. So for sure, I would have lost one helicopter um, if these things had lit off. So I'm. this went exactly the way I wanted to demonstrate to you guys the power of these attacks with these helicopters. Um, are you using attack choppers or are you using gunships? I got both. So this is attack helicopters right here. And if you right. notice, the way I change the uh the patrol i just wanted to go barely over the center here because that's the center of this province is where this main stack this main mrl stack is um, gotcha. and so i'm doing the same kind of trick now here with infantry i don't want to use infantry against these guys right this guy for sure because he'll shoot him out of the sky uh this yeah. guy here because it's weak against armor so let me go against these guys now he's got a little bit of armor mixing there but he's got you know three infantry units in there so I'm able to strike against these guys and probably do considerably good damage against. Um, and these are only level one too, so you'd think they wouldn't be that great, but they're they're, they're going to lay out some smack, that's for sure. So we'll see what happens here in a minute. So I'll put it on pause. I'll come back here in about seven minutes, and we'll see what happens. All right, here we are now. We got about a minute and eight seconds left before this gunship reaches the patrol zone and you'll notice that overlap just barely over these this infantry officer stack right here so again he can't see me he has, his radar isn't going to show that there's anything there um even though he's got radar that's going to be within range this particular radar doesn't show anything other than ground unit signature high so uh this unit is not going to be visible. So I got 30 seconds or so until he hits the attack. If this goes off correctly, what I'm expecting to see is he takes a hit. I'll take a little bit of damage because he's got a hell of a stack right there. Um, and then uh, this Mav won't do anything. Um, two reasons for it is one, I'm not attacking it directly. And the second, it doesn't see me. All that's going to happen is this thing's immediately going to attack as soon as it gets down to the end of this this uh track here four seconds three it's going to hit here in just a second all right here it goes boom it hasn't hit okay so i'm probably just not quite far enough south to be able to get it so let's move it another few seconds south let's see what happens here i should have been able to get it though i think that's it right there it looks like it's over there it goes and it just attacked it Okay, so what kind of a damage did I do? So I didn't do a lot of damage. I only knocked out, you know, what, 14 plus 3. You know, roughly 20 points of damage on it. Okay, so not a lot. What did I lose? You know, I, I, I lost, you know, what, 15 points of damage there. So, uh, you know, not not the most effective attack. These are only level 1. So considering that the, the level difference in research, that's probably pretty good. But the big thing I wanted to demonstrate here is just how you use these... Uh, helicopters, be it gunships or attack, and attack I really prefer over the gunships um, because they're going after MRLs, but how you use them to evade radar detection and be able to project an attack at the end of their travel distance, beyond the travel distance using their their patrol range, and try to make it so that you just get the units that you're after. Um, so, 
anyway, that was pretty successful. Uh, Jeremy, anything to add to that? Uh, just also be aware that even though they can't see you on radar, when you do fly over any enemy territory, they can still see you just like any other normal match. Yeah, they're not stealth. Right, um, they're not stealth. Okay. I think that's all I wanted to show you with this, so I'm going to pause this, and then we're going to uh, pick up with uh, where the, Span the Spanish map is here in just a little bit. So... Uh, stand by for that. Hey, Swan Chief, we're back now. I got Jeremy with me. He is in position now to attack Madrid. So he has moved through Elvas into this valley here. What you really want to do when you're doing these attacks is make sure that you have your terrain type on. So you can see that this is open terrain right here. And he has captured these couple of territories. He's progressing, capturing more territories, and he's all set up for attack. So with that, I'll turn it over to Jeremy. He can walk through what he's getting ready to do. Jeremy? Hey, guys. All right, so um, like you said, I've got my troops lined up. Um, I've got everything on return fire so as not to automatically engage any enemy targets uh, versus what I want to engage primarily. Um, so, and that also allows me to give a retreat order or a, or a move order to move back so that I don't get hit or get hit the least amount as possible and don't get stuck in engaging them over and over again. So I have my, uh, my MA, uh, my mobile artillery out front. And what I'd plan to do is hit with that first and then retreat it. And then if they do a return fire, uh, if there was anything in Madrid that would do a return fire, it would hit that first. Now, having said that, if they had a radar that, were, that was able to see me and they had MRLs there, they would be able to hit me right now because I'd be in range. However, we see that they don't. Um, so I would want to hit with my mobile artillery first, move it back, then fire a second shot almost immediately with my officer stack right behind it. That's got my MRLs in it because they're in range to hit as well. And then move all of them back. And then I can cycle other ones forward to do the same thing, um, you know, kind of over and over again, depending on what's there and what I want to hit and, and, you know, how I want to progress from there. I also have my gunship hovering um, a little farther back, um, farther back in case they have ASF. And, you know, just in case I don't need it, but it's there in case a single infantry tries to come out and, you know, capture a territory that I'm going for or something like that, I could hit it with that. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on my mobile artillery and give it an attack order on Madrid. And so I'll do that now. And let's see, four seconds. attacks it's not attacking for some reason Okay, here we go. All right, so a minute, 58 seconds, and it'll attack. And then I will immediately turn around and attack with my MRL stack. And so essentially what we're, what we're going for is to minimize our minimize our loss of units and at the same time um, to deal out as much damage as possible. So if they hit my MA stack, um, yes, I'll probably take some damage. If there was something there to hit my MA stack, yes, I would take some damage. But it doesn't damage my my main priority stack, which would be my officer and MRL stack. And so that's okay if they hit that. Uh, essentially, we don't want them to hit anything. Um, however, I would rather them hit that versus or hit my infantry versus hitting my officer and MRL stack. We want to keep that one as contained in this high level, you know, as high HP as possible. 
What were you about to say, Chief? Oh, I was just going to point out that what, what we're going to show here is also how to use con news to understand what's been happening with damage and stuff and what units have been killed. So we're going to go over that here in just a moment. Once he lights this off, he gets the MRL right. attack in there. We'll take a look at that. Got 30 seconds. Yeah, right now the con news shows where um, Egypt took casualties from the previous attack that you had. And so the next it'll show mine. And at the same time that I'm attacking this stack or, or whatever would be in Madrid, I'm still keeping my infantry going uh, forward so that, all right, there goes my MA. They attacked, so then I move it immediately back. There it goes. And then I'll light off another fire with my MRLs. So you can see with just that one MA attack, it wiped out all the infrastructure that was there. It was just a level one army base and an air base. Completely wiped out that infrastructure. Um, that caused uh, significant damage to his, the helicopter that was there, the gunship. Now that turns into, since it's got no airfield, it now turns into a little truck. And uh, the radar and the infantry that's there, uh, there was two infantry there. I think it lost one infantry. Um, and then course the radar both of these took significant damage as well so you can go and look and see what con news says and it shows that it lost a motorized infantry and an army base and air base that were damaged so this all right go ahead no i was gonna say two two minutes until my mrl stack hits all right so this con news is really important i'll talk about it for a couple minutes while we're waiting on this thing when my eighth when my um Artillery units attacked Egypt in Bulgaria. You can see right away the first attack was a mobile anti-air vehicle got wiped out. Then the subsequent attack lost two uh, MRLs. That was another MA. Then we had an MRL attack against it. That was two more MRLs got hit. And then I had the air attack come in with helicopters and lost two more MRLs. Uh, when the final one went in, the gunships, it didn't kill anything. It just did damage. So nothing got reported. But that's how you use this. Really important to understand what's happening, what units are lost, gather intel, um, and what kind of units you're facing and so on. So it's it's important to know that every time you fight with something, you dish out some damage, go look and see uh, what got killed, what reported got, um, got damaged, and so on. Now Jeremy's um, main objective here is uh, first to inflict damage on any unit, with the priority being any kind of artillery unit, and then the second to be inflict damage on uh, on centers of production. So any of these cities that have anything to produce, he should be shooting at those and trying to kill those as well. So um, right now, when this MRL hits, this one here, it's gonna hit in 26 seconds. It should wipe out the remaining units that are there and that is you know mission accomplished really because not only did he wipe out units he is going to destroy or has destroyed the production capability in madrid right and then we just move forward from there um hitting you know the higher priority targets next um, which would be any city that was producing artillery and uh you know uh larger airfields and all right so there goes my mrl and it killed everything that was there so i don't have a need necessarily to move that back anymore the only thing that i need to do now is continue forward to my next target so then i need to decide if i'm going to go down to uh seville down in the south and then hit malaga on the way or if i want to go to valencia and saragoza depending on what they're building what their infrastructure looks like and, and what units are around in those areas seeing as how i have level three radars i can see anything in and around uh, Seville, and then also down all the way in Malaga. There's nothing on the way there. There's just something in each city. Uh, so I just have to make a decision from there what I'm going to hit. And then when you make that decision, you, you use the same concept that you that that I've used in taking the route that I took to get to Madrid. 
So if I'm going to go down to Seville and hit Malaga, then I want to take that uh, next province that my infantry is going into. Once I take that province, I'll follow southwest along that line and then and then just follow it all the way instead of going down into that mountain area to hit Malaga because there's no reason for me to. I'll have the range to hit it without getting in the mountains and without, without getting into a slow area that's going to potentially put me in a position to where I can get hit one or two times trying to get out of the mountains. Even though I have a bonus for my attack, I have a severe deficit as far as my speed goes um, to be able to get back in an area where I can travel at full speed, even though I have an infantry officer, it still slows me down way too much to even consider going down in the mountain areas unless absolutely necessary. So with, with this track that he's talking about is taking this province and then this one here and then this one here, you know, that puts him in range one, two, three, four, five, possibly as many as six cities of the seven total cities here. So a really good track to come in here. And this is the kind of analysis that you should be doing. Look for how can I quickly move? How can I get to uh, his rear areas and hit his, um, his production centers? How can I take out units and minimize losses? And you do that by, uh, by being able to rapidly move up and then rapidly move away. And as you move up, fire, move away, and you're not likely to take a hit. Or if you do take a hit, you know, you're only going to get the one hit, of course. So what he's got here is a really powerful stack, um, a total of looks like 20 MAs. And uh, not only does he have his main stack of MRLs, let me turn this off, his main stack of MRLs, which is eight here. He's got a couple a couple more, I thought, in here as well. Right there, two two more. Oh, no, that's another 10. Oh, my Lord. So that, have, that's, that's just incredible. 18 MRLs right there. So, you know, that, that's a really powerful, powerful force. And there's very little that would be able to withstand that. Um, so, yeah. I'm, uh, the, the only thing that you have to make sure is if you're going to have stacks like that, you need air protection uh, because... They have no defense against anything coming in with the air, so you have to have either SAMs or MAVs there with it to make sure that your stuff stays protected because if not, they're going to pick you off one, two, and three at a time uh, with um, elite aircrafts or with strikers or bombers or missiles, you know, whatever they choose to use. You have no defense against it, so you have to keep air protection, you know, anti-air coverage around your main units. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much for uh, sharing that. And um, I'm sure it was fun beating up on Madrid. <laughs> now, oh, of course. Madrid's lost his units there. Of course, it's lost a couple of victory points because we did kill some civilians there. Oh, well. And it uh, looks like, actually, that probably was seven, right? So you wiped out three civilian, um, three three population, which is a really big yeah. hit. That does One affect your morale and stuff. Normally, in a public game, you'd be much more concerned about it. But in an alliance match, you don't care. Yeah. One more chi uh, thing I want to add, Chief, is um, obviously there are going to come times where you're going to have to go through forests and mountain areas. Uh, the only thing that I would suggest, I'm sure Chief would do the same, is try your best to follow along your uh, – be aware of your angles, be aware of, your, of your, the lines you're going to take, and make sure that when you're going through those areas that there's nothing that's going to be able to catch up to you and hit you before you're back out of those areas because they're going to have to go through them too more than likely. So if you're going to go through them, make sure that you're secured, uh, that you've taken everything that you can from the areas that are safe for you to move back and forth along, and that the angles that you take to get in and out of those types of terrains, where, um, whether it's mountains or forests, um, Make sure that those angles are uh, the best angles that you can take to keep from losing units. Because as Chief will mention several times, and I will definitely agree, um, the, the more conservative you are with losing units, the more likely you are to succeed over the enemy. Because that's the main key, is to eliminate their units so that you can take the land. Taking the land is important, but it's not as important as... Uh, killing their units and killing their ability to um, produce more units. Yeah, you could take the land later. You know, exactly. once you wipe out all the units, then you just move around and take the land at will. It doesn't really matter. So, uh, I would call that not even worth considering until all the units and his production is wiped out. 
Some of the, one other thing to point out is like I could tell Jeremy is getting a, very skilled now because he already when he took this uh, this province he already started building military logistics and that's exactly what you want to do you want a high speed avenue of approach um, to bring more units up and to be able to retreat if you need to um, and quickly get away from an enemy's ability to attack you when you're moving into enemy territory you're moving significantly slower uh, once you're inside friendly territory you're moving faster. And then once you put in these um, these military logistics, uh, as as they begin to build, you get a benefit from them. So they don't have to be 100% in place to get that benefit. So here, 66%, just, that means you got a 66% um, or 60% benefit. Right. And just in case anybody doesn't know, military logistics is basically putting in roads uh, that help your units travel faster. So you'll get a significant bonus in speed with your units traveling across that area, whether it's mountains, forest, plains, desert, it doesn't matter. You get the bonus. It's just still keep in mind that that bonus does apply to the mountain area. However, your units will travel slower across the mountain area, even with those military logistics. So just, uh, I mean, me and Chief probably can't harp on it enough. Uh, terrain is key when you're using artillery. Well, terrain is key when you're doing anything. So you need well, to you pay attention to terrain no matter what you're doing. And this is, you know, you remember now the intent of conflict of nations is to kind of replicate um, the things that influence battle. So terrain is a huge influence on battle, and that is very faithfully recreated in the game, um, both in in the sense that you get bonuses. Um, that help you or you get negative bonuses that hurt you depending on what kind of unit you are is what kind of train it is so anyway with that uh that concludes what i wanted to show you guys for some tactics techniques and procedures for thinking about how to uh, leverage terrain in order to participate in and execute uh artillery combat uh with that uh jeremy thank you very much this is fun chief signing off and uh Hope to see you on the battlefield out here. Thank you.